When I used to hear the word minimalism, I would honestly avoid it. I'm like, ah, that just sounds like a lot of rules and things I got to follow, a lot of restrictions. That was until this conversation with Katie Marie and David Hughes. They really changed our perspective on minimalism and how they are actually able to function at a higher level and have more freedom in their life due to living this lifestyle. It's not just about decluttering your closet, although that is a piece of it. It's really thinking about your life as a whole, like where are areas that you don't have boundaries in, that you have been saying yes to all the things when you really should be saying no. It's about decluttering your mind so that you can function at the highest level for your family, for your spouse, for your team. David and Katie are multiple business owners, their parents, the high level entrepreneurs, and just awesome people. Get excited for this show. You're going to have some awesome takeaways. I am so excited to talk today uh, to David and Katie. They are another powerhouse entrepreneur couple. So you guys already have that working dynamic that that Steven and I have had to learn and, and grow into as well. You guys are investors, you know a ton about real estate, which we're definitely gonna talk about. But as well as Katie, you have dove into um, becoming like a personal style coach and decluttering. And in this last year, I actually invested in a personal style coach. I had a brand photo session that was coming up and, and I, I would consider myself like, I feel like I understand style. I like clothes. I always have. But when it came time to thinking about this photo shoot I had coming up, I was super overwhelmed. And I just was like, I need to hire somebody who knows more than me. And what was really interesting is through that process and doing this whole color console and different things, I realized that I had believed a lie about like, a wardrobe piece and different things about styling myself my entire life. And as soon as I had an expert or somebody who actually knew more than me speak into that, I feel like it has opened so many opportunities and, and different ways that I see the world. And it's made me think like, how many times do women and moms or just anybody in general, like we hear one thing when we're young and we take that as hard truth when in reality, like it might not actually be a factor of truth. And so Katie, I would just love to know, like in your journey in this, like decluttering personal style as you dove into it for your own life, what were some of those lies that maybe you believe that you've kind of like debunked in this process? Oh my goodness. Such an amazing, amazing question. You know, I think um, the the lie that I had to kind of wear all of the colors and not have more of a capsule color palette was something that I had just believed. David and I were actually talking about it the other day because minimalism has been such a gift to us. It has been such a lifestyle hack that has affected every area of our life, of our children's lives, it's been transformational. Like we can't get enough of it. And so we were actually out for a walk and he was asking me, you know, three things that, that I learned and three things, you know, three takeaways. So this is like right in line. We talk about this all the time. And I said, you know, I used to have a wardrobe of like, oh goodness, a thousand pieces of clothing easily. I had racks of sweatshirts and just like a massive closet. It was so massive that it actually broke. I, it came off the wall, one of the multiple racks. My that mom and I heard, uh, yeah, <laughs> we heard an insane crash, went in, and it was like everything was all over the floor. So I had all the colors of the rainbow and I have a very colorful personality and I love expressing myself through personal style, through color, but also through the absence of color as, you know, I love high contrast. And so when I was given that freedom to let go of all of the stuff that I never wore anyway, it was like my true self came through and it was like, okay, girl, these are the things you've been wearing all the time anyway. And when you wore these other things, you didn't really feel like yourself, but you like hammered through the day because you thought like you have to wear, like I have to wear brown. Sometimes I can't always wear black. No, I don't ever have to wear brown if I don't want to. And, you know, for all of you watching, if there's a color that just like makes you break out in hives on the inside when you wear it, don't ever wear that so th that was one of them and then the other thing which I have a million of them 
is that it's wasteful to remove things from my life. It's wasteful because I might need it someday. I think that is the biggest lie that we could ever believe is that holding on to something is actually bringing us value. No, when I have things in my life that completely take my attention away from the things, the people, the relationships, the experiences that matter most, it's actually hurting me. And also there's a whole world of people out there who could actually find value from the things that I've held on to, I've never used, I don't like them, I'm never going to use them. Um, so that was transformational for me because once I realized I could let go, I have a very um, high contrast personality. I'm like all in when I find something. So David can verify when I found out about minimalism and finally gave myself that permission to not hold on to all of the things, it was like I was a whirlwind and I was going in and decluttering. And it's a lifestyle. It's not something that you're ever going to arrive at. It's something that that you will hone and craft. And it's not the end goal. It's just one of the powerful tools that you can use along your journey. It's awesome. I one thing I love about you guys is, you know, we've we've I feel like run in similar circles, been at like a lot of conferences together. Um, been in the same room a lot of times. And I love how you guys are able to take really complex things and make them simple. You kind of have this higher level way of seeing things, even the way you guys invest and things like that. I would love to know like this minimalism thing, you kind of got onto the minimalism train. It probably sounds like it kind of, it started with one area, but then snowball into other areas. Like when I envision it, when I hear people say minimalism, I envision like, you know, you guys are living in a just all concrete house and there's like nothing on the wall. And it's like you go to your closet and there's just like one shirt on one <laughs> hanger, you know? So educate me. Like, what is what does life look like for you guys? What other areas has this minimalism thing touched? And how has it like impacted, you know, your family life? Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's it's I think that's the common. Oh, we were the same. Well, I know I was the same way when I, I heard was the same way. When so, I heard the word yeah. minimalism, a picture pops in our mind, right? We have a, our brain associations, however that got in there. It's my and I'll call it minimalism. The person with the plain walls, nothing hanging on the wall with a mattress on the floor, you know, there's, I mean, not appealing, not, not, not exciting, not, I mean, we're very excited, like full of life, love life, experience, all that. And, and so what we found uh, is it's totally opposite and way more than we ever realized. And if I had to sum it up, it's really freedom and abundance, unprecedented freedom and abundance in every area. But it is a progressive realization, no doubt, because, yeah, it started, you know, in different areas of life, but it, it has transformed every area of her life. And I mean, she got rid of 95% of her clothes and all that kind of stuff, but, but she looks and feels fashion-wise better than she ever has, which she was always amazing in that category as, as a gifted artist and all these things, but it's less is more removing everything that's less than the greatest in every area of our life is what it's about. And actually, um, we don't, we don't, we don't get any proceeds. I'm not saying this for this, but <laughs> everyone needs to read this book. 10 X is easier than two X. Yeah. This it's book, crazy. that's what he's early on. He starts talking about like Michelangelo. And actually I did a post about this. We live here by Siesta Key beach, right? Number one beach in the country for many years. It's got this unique sand. They just recently had, like the best sand sculptors in the world were here. They do it every year, building these huge, massive, intricate, detailed, the most amazing, blow your mind, sand sculptures. Uh -huh. You can see it on my Facebook I post, but it's crazy. But what I said was, like, you look at this, and you've never known, like, that someone can make this out of sand. It's so detailed. It's so incredible. It's mm -hmm. amazing. These things are huge, bigger than, taller than you, bigger. Like, oh. they're incredible sculptures. But what I said was kind of the same point in principle here. They didn't create those by building, taking sand and, and piecing it together and adding and building and creating. They created these most amazing things you've ever seen, sand sculptures, with a pile of sand and removing everything that was not the masterpiece inside of the that pile of sand, which is really, to me, minimalism. Like, in this book, of course, talks a lot about it, but so for me, minimalism is a mindset that produces a life of unprecedented freedom and abundance in every area of life, not just one, which is relationships, health, finances, all those things, our mission, our impact, you know, yeah. and so it's, it's the mechanism that makes all that happen because without it, there's friction and drag. It's like trying to run a race with a parachute tied to your back or holding bowling balls. That's where most people are at. I believe in life. If they're not, uh, taking on this mindset, heart set, we, I call it a life set, which is the logistics of our life. 
because anybody can look at it and say, oh, that's a cluttered closet. But what we don't see is the cluttered thoughts in your mind. Yeah. All the cluttered yeah. busyness of thoughts. So that's, you talk about clutter way beyond the clothes, the things. What about the people clutter in your life? Yeah. What about mm -hmm. that are less than the best relationships that got that they, 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 you that are going to be propelling you into your greatest destiny and who you're supposed to be? Mm -hmm. I believe the reason, one of the core reasons that most people live far less than their God-given design and potential is because of this. Mm -hmm. There's too much clutter of all types and sorts. Thought clutter, people clutter, things clutter, digital clutter, information clutter, 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 clutter. So anyway, I'm gonna stop there. I get so, I get excited because it has been so exciting. So good. And I could just add one more thing. This this was transformational for me as well. So the truth is, no matter how much stuff we have, we are using at most 20% of our items 80% of the time. That means your closet, you're wearing maybe 20%. You're probably wearing closer to 10 to 15%. And you know you are because when you have a whole closet full of clothes, but your favorite things are dirty and you're like, oh, I can't go to work today. I don't have anything to wear. No, you've got like 300 items, but none of them are your best choice. And so when I realized that I was actually, I knew it. I had my favorite this, my favorite that, my favorite jeans, my favorite sweater, my favorite sweatshirt. When I realized that, hey, I was always picking over all of the other choices. Hey, I can actually remove that. Give myself room to breathe. Decision fatigue, y'all, is so real. And knowing that I can go into my closet, I can be blindfolded, pick a top, pick a bottom, pick a jacket, even if I need it. I have two pairs of earrings. You guys, if you could have known the jewelry woman that I was, but I wasn't thousands, wearing the majority of, yeah, of them. I literally like fashion is a huge part of my life. I'm an artist in all the ways. And if I can have two pairs of earrings and be thriving like never before, like you can do it too. So we're all living a minimalist lifestyle but we have so much excess in the way. All of these things are screaming at us saying, you're not thin enough, you're not big enough, you're not tall enough, you're not short enough, you're not all these things. So giving yourself freedom to just have the things that make you who you are so that you can actually focus on the things that matter is everything. Uh, and the last thing that's key <laughs> is you don't have to have just two pair of earrings. No. The ladies, you flip them out maybe. You don't have to. We can talk about it. It'll minimum, change your life. Yeah. It will. Don't knock it till you try. But <laughs> uh, minimalism looks different for every single yes. person. It's a maximized life in the things that matter most yes. to you. If that's you having 100 earrings and they're all your favorite and you wear all of them, that's minimalism. You don't you, wear you, them all, but you I mean. <laughs> You've minimized and removed everything that aren't the highest, best, most exciting Thing. So that's really also the aha that most yeah. people like, oh, I got to let go. No, no, you you actually make room for the best, the better, the greatest of everything, experiences, things, people, all of that. And and really, that's the point of it. Yep. So good. Mm -hmm. I, did, I thought like, I think mindsets like this, they take time to develop, right? It takes mm -hmm. time to like kind of make this your default. Mm -hmm. Did you guys use any mental tricks like in the early days? I remember reading the book Essentialism and one thing that stuck out to me was like he was like, would you rebuy this item right now? Mm, right. Like you're going through your closet. Like, would you rebuy this? And like, when you ask that question, you're like, ah, no, I wouldn't rebuy it. It's like, okay, it's a no. Do you have any other mental tricks like that, that kind of helped you develop the mindsets, like things that you would just ask yourself or filters, you would filter decisions through? Absolutely. So if it wasn't an absolute yes, I use this all the time. It doesn't necessarily have to spark joy for me. If it's something that I just get so much use out of, then if it's not an absolute yes, then it's an absolute no. And that is something that has been so transformational for me. And the thing is, you, you don't have to get rid of these things right away. You can have a box. Go put it out in your garage for three months. Set a timer on your phone. Say, hey, check out that box in three months. And if I haven't pulled anything out of it, then I can actually let it go without even looking in the box. But that right there, if I don't want to wear it right now, today, 
it, and it's for the someday, then it means that there's a reason that I'm holding on to it and it's not actually serving me. And then um, another one that is so powerful is, okay, so say you've got this um, gift or something that you purchased, very expensive, it's a huge investment. And you imagine letting it go, like that's terrifying, you know, like I spent a lot of money on that, so I'm going to hold on to it to get the value. Well, the value was gone the moment you paid for it. But if you can imagine this expensive item that you bought all of a sudden just disappearing, like it just explodes, it just like evaporates. What is the feeling that you get from it being taken away, like off your plate? If you feel excitement of like, wow, finally that designer bag isn't going to be screaming at me that I wasted that money, then th you need to let it go. And if it's something that's like, oh, I use that all the time. I don't want to let it go. Then that's something that you hold on to. So there are just so many tricks that you can use. And, you know, putting things away in a box for a maybe for a definitive set of time can be really powerful because once you remove the thing, and a few weeks go by, you're like, actually, I never wore that sweatshirt. I know I didn't use it, but it created some separation emotionally and mentally so that it's like, you know what? It's easier for me to let it go. The last thing I will say is um, mementos, different things that are sentimental or even things that are difficult for you to let go of, but you know they don't serve you anymore. Take a picture of them. Maybe it's a great jacket that, that you used to wear or you it was a fantasy self kind of thing. Take a picture of it, store it in your phone, let the item go. You can still look at it if you want to or an old letter or whatever it is. And then eventually you'll find that as time passes and as you really focus on the things that matter the most, if it wasn't really important to you, you'll be able to delete the picture in time. And so it's just kind of an, a more of an ease in letting something out of your life. Hmm. I love this approach of, I've never heard minimalist talk, minimalism talk the way you guys have talked. Cause I've joked like, haha, Steve and I are not minimalists. Like, and I kind of, I've almost like pride myself and like, it's okay that I'm not. Cause I think I tried to go to the very extreme of like the one t-shirt and the one, and I, I love color. I love fashion. Like I love shiny, nice things. Like I just, I do, but I know that I, by the amount of times I'm editing my closet, like something does need to change so this conversation for me if anything is inspiring me and I I think I read somewhere in a book about like you can look at somebody's closet and if it's super like unorganized like imagine like the declutter in their mind and I often feel that way like I'm looking around our office right now and it's driving me crazy. don't look that direction but I know it's like for a good thing so I love these practical tools um yeah and Katie I would love for you to speak on this like I know that you're a mom I'm a, like a mom as well and like going through um like pregnancy and then like your body changing and and I feel like even in the last year, like half the clothes that I wore before I was pregnant, like I'm not really wearing, but there's sentimental value. So what is your, what have you or teach clients through that have gone through like, you know, pregnancy and, and I have lost weight since baby, but it took a while. So I had to buy new jeans. Otherwise I'd have no pants to wear. And now I'm like trying to sell those jeans that no longer fit me. You know, like what, how do you balance that of like, obviously needing clothes, but also the minimalist and wanting to feel good in the process too. So good. And you know, these transformations that we go through as women, as moms, um, you know, it can be, uh, it can take a, a psychological toll on us. So I believe that we need to be supported. And it's not our job to fit into our clothing. It's our clothing's job to fit us. And so I believe that whatever season we're in, you know, whether we're trying to let go of weight or maybe we're trying to gain weight, that, that we're worthy to be focused on more than what we put on our bodies. Like the Bible says, you know, don't worry about what you wear. God provides all of that. And so as much as, you know, it brings Chelsea, you and me to life, you know, to be able to express ourselves like there's more for us to focus on. So let's put ourselves into things that make us feel amazing so that we can take on the day. And I'm sure you have experienced like I have when I'm wearing something that is just so me, I actually don't think about it at all that entire day. I'm just like high level, best Katie Marie out there. 
And so, you know, when it comes to pregnancy specifically, I am a huge believer in if it doesn't fit you, it should not be within your eyesight. It shouldn't be in your drawer. It shouldn't be hanging. It, it might not even need to be in another closet because if you're going to come up against it, is it going to bring you into a lie saying, well, you used to fit into this or this is the old you, you know, that was the good version of you. Now you're this, this and this. Like those are lives that lies that we will not believe. And the, the enemy and the world are constantly trying to tell us that we don't measure up already. So we don't need our clothes that are just, objects that don't mean anything to be lying to us. So in pregnancy, I think it's important to pack away the favorite things or the sentimental things. Give yourself, you know, a nice tub or whatever container you've chosen. Put those things lovingly away and literally get them out of sight. And then make sure that you have clothes that fit you right now in this season that you're in and they make you feel good like they make you feel as good as the clothes that you have tucked away because I I suffered um drastically from major eating disorder that almost took my life and I um I wear a zero right now and a double zero was huge on me like I could pull the pants off and on I weighed like 80 pounds and I held on when I when I had gained weight that I needed to, I was still holding on to some of those clothes. And when I got healthy and I was able to, I because I had gained some weight, but then I was able to get to a healthy set point where I had lost some of that weight, I actually had held on to those clothes. But do you know what? The styles had changed. My taste had changed. I didn't like low rise or mid rise anymore. I didn't like this certain cut. I didn't like this fabric. I didn't like this color. So I had held on to all of these things for the someday. And then when I actually did reach my goals just naturally, this stuff wasn't even appropriate for me anymore. All of that to say, you need to invest however you need to, to make yourself feel amazing, especially all you mamas who are pregnant. This is a time of joy, a time of new things. God is doing something new in you, birthing, creating a human that has never been before. So you need to be supported in all the ways. And I think one of the most important ways is the way that you choose to express yourself so that you don't feel like you have to wear your husband's baggy t-shirts all day or, you know, just go get some big frumpy clothing that you don't feel good in. You can look so good, your best version with a bun in the oven. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So good. What's up, Rainmaker? If you're like me, having a good night's sleep is an absolute must, especially as a parent and an entrepreneur. And I feel like I found the secret weapon. It's called Eight Sleep. This brand is a way to add heating and cooling to any bed. And I'm telling you, this cooling feature is an absolute life changer for me, especially during those warm summer months. This might be TMI, but I sweat very easily. And I didn't really realize how much this was affecting my quality of sleep. Once I slept on this bed that has a cooling feature, imagine like the cool side of the pillow, but like all over your body all the time. I do not know how I lived without this. So if you're ready to revolutionize your sleep, head over to rainmakerfamily.com slash deals. We got a hookup for Rainmaker Family Show listeners. Again, that's rainmakerfamily.com slash deals and check out eight sleep. All right, back to the show. I'm curious, you guys, minimalism, we talked to clothing. I mean, such good insights and strategy there because again, this is not just about the closet, right? It's about mm -hmm. the overflow in your mind yeah. and your life. And, and I love how you guys brought that abundant mindset to it. It's like removing is actually giving you more freedom, yes. you know? Yeah. How have you done this? I love in 10 X is easier than two X. He talks about calendar and like how you structure calendar. How have you guys implemented minimalism in your calendar? How you manage your time, family, business, you guys got a lot going on in the entrepreneur world in the family world. Um, any rules or, or things you brought from the minimalism world into your calendar? Yeah, well, a lot. It's, <laughs> I mean, a, it's a little, it's a, it's a lot in impact, but really a little in the shifts. It's, it's like we say, big doors swing on little hinges, right? It's the details that really, you know, make the big breakthroughs. Everybody thinks, oh, I got to find some big step, some big silver bullet in business or marriage or whatever. But it's, it's those subtle little nuances in changing the way I can say the same thing to our spouse in a totally different way and get a totally different result, positive or negative. And so it's, yeah. it's those things for me, like with the calendar, 
for one, huge, like early on in our marriage, we've been married almost nine uh, glorious years now. And with Gabriel the Great, our two and a half year old, um, and another one on the way. And so we Yay. are so thankful. Yes, thank you. And, and just blessed. But minimalism, you know, from a calendar, I mean, time is our greatest resource. It's, I mean, you can always pay more money, you can do whatever, but, but time. And so this is one of the things when we got married was a, a different, like she was an extreme saver and I was an investor mindset. But I came from being an extreme saver growing up. And so for her, she would spend a lot of time just to save a little bit of money, right? Drive across town, all that to find the cheapest gas and save a dollar. So so for me, I was able to lovingly lead her into maybe, you know, time is infinitely more valuable than money. And so that, that of course, changes every decision, everything in, in every area of life. But on the calendar, since that has to do with our time, then that is you know, the, the priority, because that, that's everything. Our marriage, what time, what boundaries, how do we spend our time? How is it allocated? How is it invested? How is it spent? And so for us, we look through the lens. We wouldn't always be looking through the lens as an investor. We believe God's the ultimate investor. He invested his everything, his all himself in radical fashion. In, Rom in, in Romans 8, it, it talks about that. So, so same for us, right? We believe in our marriage. Our children, our relationships, our businesses, they're all the fruit or lack thereof or dysfunction, right, or function is a result of the investments that are happening. And so with our calendar, that's an that's an, got to be an intentional, proactive investment allocation of our time with not only proactive intention looking forward, but also margin. You know, most people don't have margin. They're just survival mode on the hamster wheel, busyness with their children, running here, running everywhere, and 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 people not taking time. Like we were just unplugged for a week up north. We just got back Michigan in the wilderness, and this is one of the things we were talking about on one of our long walks in the wilderness. And we were talking about margin, right? And and how many people, most people, we believe from our observations, don't at all like it's a foreign concept for people to actually unplug and ponder life yeah just think like people don't even know how to think mm -hmm. there because it's so robotic conditioned just behaviors of there that when but so and people are scared to don't know how they don't even know they don't even want to be with themselves because it's so scary they don't even know who they are all those reasons that's a whole other topic we go down but that's to us has to do with the calendar right i mean when we look at the greatest leader the greatest of everything that modeled how we're supposed to be living jesus he often withdrew to lonely places to be alone. Why? Now, he was very social, very great impact, poured out all of that, but that was a result of him investing in himself and his primary relationship with his heavenly father. And so we can say, I want to be the best husband and, and father all day long, but what am I doing today and every day to invest in myself, body, soul, and spirit so that I can be, because that will never happen of me her getting to have and receive the best version of who I'm supposed to be uh, growing every day, that investment. And it starts, I mean, the calendar <laughs> is, is what, what are we doing or not doing? So for us, boundaries and counterbalance are two major mechanisms and it has to do with minimalism. Just like with you guys, when you have businesses and children and things, you got to have margin and flexibility. So that's important. But one of the biggest things we learned was that when we say, okay, no phones, no business, all that after this time each day, and on weekends for us and our boundaries and our, and our time. However, if we're in a live event or a conference or we're doing something that requires evening or weekend time, we did a post about this recently. There's no such thing as a balanced life. Mm -hmm. It's counterbalancing. We're always out of balance. We're here right now. This is it. This is, this is the, this time is getting this, nothing else, mm -hmm. our child, nothing else. So we're always out of balance. But it's about living that, again, Jesus, he wasn't with anybody when he was alone. A lot of people, I need, I need, give me, give me. No, he was over. But so with us, we counterbalance. We're like, hey, if that bled into our time that we have boundaries and structured for our time of investing in our marriage or with our child, whatever that is, in our evenings or weekends, where are we counterbalancing next week to take a day off, a full day or two days or whatever off of business to make sure we're never sacrificing those great the the things and the priority and the order so that yeah. would be one of the main mm -hmm. things yeah i love that concept it's like 
I think that that just brings a lot of freedom to some people who I think there's a lot of t- tug of war mm-hmm. uh, with parents who run businesses of like, oh, I have to sacrifice one for the other, you know, and we just did this yesterday. We did a um, we were listening to Dan Martell talk on uh, his concept of like a preloaded calendar, which we've had a couple of people mention that on the, the podcast where you just schedule in your life first. Right. And then the business. And um that was such a powerful thing for us when we started doing years like that, where we just mm-hmm. look way ahead. We schedule in the life first, mm-hmm. even like week to week, we're doing this. We're like in the next 10 days, mm-hmm. when are we getting a date night in? You know, like when are we, when are we doing solo time with the boys or, or whatever that thing is that like mm-hmm. we want to invest in. If we don't calendar, we don't put it on there. It's just going to, it's going to get out of bounds. We are going to sacrifice one for the other. So I love that concept of counterbalance because it's just, it's a, it's a really nice visual. And I think we do it, we do it subtly. Like we're like, oh, it feels like we just kind of feel it. Or like, it feels like <laughs> we need a little more boy time with the yeah. boys. And, you know, it's just feeling a little off. But I just, I like that. Like, are we at, are we feeling like we need a counterbalance? So definitely and I gonna take- love that you lean into where, where your hearts are, what your heart needs. Because like you said, you know, if we don't create our lives, our lives are created for us all day, every day. And absolutely these days are going to be filled up. And, you know, God created everything in six days and rested on the seventh, like everything that we see and everything that we don't see. So we can absolutely make what we need to have happen, happen in the amount of time that we allot for it. And, you know, there's the Pareto principle and the Parkinson's law. You can look those up, you know, utilizing these different tactics to make sure that you are highest, best, using the time that you have been given and, you know, leaning into the feel like there's just times where um, David and I have a minimum of an entire day that we spend together, but sometimes we just need more. And it's like everything else can wait because if we don't have this, if we're not investing in this, then we can't be anything else. Same thing with our relationship with God comes first. We come second with each other, our child, our children come third, and then everything else falls down from there. And so also I encourage you to put in the calendar things that make you come alive. You know, maybe you're a musician and you just want to be part of uh, something that your church has going on. Put that in first, put that in because it's essential to you. And, you know, um, my best friend and I talk about it quite a bit you know, I have a tendency to reward myself after I've done the things that I need to do to go do my music and to go do all these things that make me who I am, you know, to call that friend. No, actually, if I feel it and I want to call that friend, that's part of the freedom that I've been given as an entrepreneur. That's what we work so hard for. Like maybe we should reward ourselves on the front end so that we are filled up from the inside. Same thing with dates with our spouse. You don't have to go anywhere. Maybe just take an hour, set it aside and make some food together, go in a room and and hang out together. So it's really from the overflow and the abundance, feeding ourselves what we need to, that then we can actually show up in a whole different way. And we find that we're able to get done in a half hour what we wouldn't have been able to get done in seven hours because we were coming from a place of depletion and lack. But that's so, this is one of the, I, I think this is like a critical point here. What you were saying was so on my heart about it's reactive versus proactive. Mm-hmm. That's really what it is. For us, for example, she said, so every Friday we take a full day, just us two, unplugged. Our nanny comes early. She stays late. And it's just us. We go wherever, go to the beach, go out to eat, go to movies, do do whatever we're going to do together. And some people hear that and they're like, oh, that's great for you. I could never do this. But that's not true. Yeah. The the I could never do this. If you believe that, you're just living your belief perpetually your whole life. We mm-hmm. just said proactively, no, our marriage is top priority. So we're going to design our life, like you guys said, yeah. first, yeah. and then everything else, our businesses, our children, the people that, that you know, everything else, that's going to fall into play after, because that's a big, that, that gets put first, doesn't matter. It's a full day every Friday. And again, if if for some reason, something that that doesn't happen, that, that we do need to make a shift where a Friday mm-hmm. happens, we say, okay, we just did it the other last week, other week, we took Thursday and Friday, yeah. just us two. 
and have a nanny come early. And again, it goes back to investment because people say, well, I can never afford a nanny. I can never take a full day off. I have job. No, we live the realities we create, but we're just, most people are reactive and not proactive in creating yeah. lives. It's living by default and not living by design. But anyone can change. That's the great news. It doesn't matter where you're at or where you've been, how many children, jobs, none of that matters about from here and where you're going. When you get new mindsets, new relationships, new who's that are better than how, all that to really walk into a new reality because um, it's about priority. And the last thing I'll say about that is you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And the truth is, and I love this. Someone said this. I didn't come up with this, but it is true. Anyone can say, I want the best marriage or my health is important, my marriage, my children are important. But what tells the truth is your calendar and your checkbook. Mm -hmm. Where is your time and money going? For us, we take a full day off every week. That's minimum because then we have our nice weekends, everything else. But but so our actions show each other and show ourselves that this is a priority over everything to the point where it's uncommon investment. And I want you all to write that down and think about it and ask yourself yeah. and get with God and ask, where can you make an un, un where can you make uncommon investments into yourself, into the relationships that matter most, into your dreams and missions and visions that otherwise will never happen unless you get consistent at being a person who makes uncommon investments? Because if you don't make uncommon investments, you will live a life of common results that everybody's living far less than their dreams, and it's unnecessary. Wow. So much Dang. more. That. Yeah, there's so much more. <laughs> this is so, so good. good. I'm gonna go back and re-listen to this episode because I think it's so critical for the time that we're in. And I know for me, like I need more margin in my schedule. I'm already looking, I was right before this looking at my calendar for this week, and it's just like, ah, it's just feeling tight. And I don't want to be giving like Steven and the boys like my leftovers, you know, like they get my first. And I think people and myself included, like we can talk about how we value these things, but you, I love that. It's like, what does your checkbook and your calendar look like to actually like edify what you actually are saying? And, mm -hmm. and is there like an off balance? And, um, I love that you guys are bringing minimalism, not just in like what we think of minimalism as far as having like a smaller closet and less stuff, because but 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 translating into minimalism and in, in business too. And I think we want to we overcomplicate things. We want to overcomplicate and have all these different offers. And it's like, no, what how can you go back to like simplicity so you're not running around just like wondering what's how you know and being reactive you know it's about being proactive in our life and in our business that is so it's powerful totally chelsea good. and the thing yeah. that i really want people to hear because if you get this one thing to me you get everything yeah. about everything we're talking about it's like what kate what you were just saying chelsea and kate and Marie, what you were saying about living a life of overflow mm -hmm. because reactive is i'm gonna fill my cup up and now when you were saying Stephen, it's like and this is what happens to us if we're not if we don't change and make the shift is we're more reactive like oh we feel like we're depleted now we need to go refill mm -hmm. our time or the chill we need to go refill it where we can live a full overflowing life perpetually if we're proactive and intentional because when we're taking that full day off and we're taking care of ourselves and doing these things on a proactive manner mm -hmm. and measure then there's consistent overflow the experience is in the overflow not man, we haven't, we need to find a date and put on the count because we haven't had a date. It's like, no, we're already doing that on the front end yeah. so that we can stay in an overflow, not up and down, more of a yo-yo kind of experience of we'll fill it up and, and then we need to, to re refill and those kind of things. And, and not saying that it's, it's just for, from our experience, that's been huge and key of, of being um, thoughtful and proactive in that approach and i think also if i could just share one more quick thing i think we need to get way more comfortable with using the word no when it comes to our calendars when it comes to our to-do list look at your to-do list maybe you have 10 things on there i bet you there's four things that you could either automate you could delegate or you could my favorite eliminate I, as David mentioned, I used to run all over town to get all the sales on all the food, and I would drive across town to go save three cents a gallon on gas, wasting more than that to go get it. And now I live a life that is so different. And you know what? There's times where there's things on my to-do list 
that don't get done because they're, guess what? Not that important. Did you know that clean clothes are still clo- are still clean whether or not they're folded and whether or not they're put away? Like there are times where I'm just full-time mama. I'm loving on my boy. I'm having so much fun with him. And we use cloth diapers and, you know, I haven't stuffed the diapers and I grab the diaper and the two inserts and I put them in right before I change his diaper and he doesn't care and I don't care. And so I think we can really, especially now, everything is going on. We can actually look at our calendars and eliminate some of the things, but to be proactive, to actually have filters, just like we do in the other areas of minimalism in our lives, have filters that Does this match up to the criteria of what is the highest, best use of my time? Now, God trumps everything. If there's something that doesn't make any sense that I feel led to do, I will always do it. But there are so many things that we are filling out of obligation that are actually draining our cup instead of filling our cup. And when we live from a place of authenticity, being okay, being in relationships where people don't put pressure on us, where there's no manipulation or expectation We come freely. We let them be freely who they are. It's just a whole game changer. And you truly do live from a place of freedom and abundance. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Awesome. I recently went through Say No November. Um, (laughs) Now I'm in Delegate December. You know, so uh, I guess we're not December yet. But I'm trying to think of one for every month because it's a great excuse when people hit you up. You're like, hey, I'm just practicing Say No November this month. So. (laughs) I love that. I want to grab that. You just like that one every month. You're like, I'm practicing yeah. say no December and January. You can hear yeah. just say no January. <laughs> no, like, no, you could just add. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freedom February. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a bunch. And then the other thing I've been telling people, because I just, like, again, like, it's like one of those things, like, sometimes, like, you're just in it and you just, then you realize, like, oh, I'm out of, yeah. there's something out of balance. And I was doing 20 plus Zoom meetings a week, like, just like a month ago, you know? And, really went with my executive assistant. I'm like, yo, we got to change this thing because I'm really only working maybe 35 hours a week uh, with our current schedule. So I was like, that's like 60% of my time, you know, Mm -hmm. on Zoom meetings. And not to say Zoom meetings are bad, but I basically started telling people, I was like, I'm on a Zoom fast. I'm not doing Zoom meetings right now. Can Mm -hmm. you send me a Loom video instead or something, right? And just like doing that, just small thing. And then also looking at my weeks ahead of time and going like, what can I de- de- delete? What can I delegate? What mm-hmm. can I, what's maybe a, not the best use of my time right now I could push to the future. Mm-hmm. You know, that's really helpful. And like just constantly auditing my own calendar, mm-hmm. you know, cause it's just, it's one of those things that could just, I say, I'm just so used to saying yes to people. I just, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm really grown in that area in the season and, and same here. And it's ongoing, like you said, Stephen, yeah. I mean, and you help each other. Like she'll ask me, like yeah. Jesus led with the questions yeah. a lot of times, self-realization, he led people into, right? So she'll say, who are you meet? What are you, what are you doing today? What? She's like, is that your best? Is that, is that, the, the, and so sometimes just getting each other to stop and think like, did you like, is that, or, or are you, you know, giving your best yes and that kind of thing? And is it something like you said, Stephen, is that something that I can push back or is it something that's just not essential in this season? We actually have turned down, you know, we love um, doing these types of interviews and just inspiring people, live events, digital events. And, you know, we, we've turned down live events that are amazing opportunities, but they just don't align with where we are, with what we need to focus on. And it can be like a gut check, like, oh, this is like my favorite thing, but it just doesn't align. And, you know, when you start to do that more and more, you find filter so much that the things that you are doing You cannot wait to wake up and do those things because the sandbags of the less than amazing, even though they can be good, good is the enemy of great. Great is the enemy of the greater. Greater is the enemy of the greatest. And so we're going for the greatest, highest, best use of everything that God has given us, including our time, our focus. You know, I will say real quick, um, Gabriel is two and a half. And he is so aware of technology. And I heard someone say that ch- young children are um, are young enough to understand that they are way more important than your technology. So as we get older, we lose that. We're like, I'll just sit there. I mean, I'm trying to talk to somebody and they're on their phone and I'll just wait. But Gabriel won't wait. He'll say, Mama, phone down. 
And I'm never even on my phone with him because he wants my undivided attention. And so we have to really pay attention. We have to focus on what we're focusing on. And saying no to stuff is honestly the most freeing thing. Because the thing is, when you say yes to something, you're automatically saying no to all of the thousand other things you could be doing. So when you start to realize that saying no to one thing actually opens you up to a thousand yeses that you could potentially give, it actually becomes a lot more positive and it becomes more exciting for those of us who love to say yes to everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that's wow. so good. Man, I've loved this conversation. I've loved your guys' like openness and just like breaking it down, making it so simple for people to grasp this. This episode is so timely. So I'm really thankful for you guys. I know you guys have lots of different businesses, different things going on. So if people want to connect to you more or just hear more even about like real estate stuff, you guys are doing, which is something we didn't even like cover this episode, which you guys are a wealth of knowledge in. Uh, where can people connect with you? Yeah. So social media, just personally, Life with Katie Marie um, on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. Um, and for me, it's just David B. Hughes on Facebook and um, Instagram is DB Hughes 55. Uh, we love connecting personally. For us, relationships are the priority um, in the order, like we mentioned. Personally, for me, number one is my relationship with God and then her and then my child and then, you know, people and, and, you know, so relationships, we love connecting in any way we can help empower you, equip you, you know, mobilize you in your dreams. You know, that's why we love Steven and Chelsea while we're here. And, you know, it, it's just awesome what you guys are doing. Thanks for having us. And we just love anything we can ever do to be of support or value you guys, the people you serve, we're all about it. So please always let us know on that. Um, But our two, so we have three main buckets. We own real estate. uh, So we have properties around the country. And then that's what gave us financial freedom years ago. And so then it turned into teaching people, helping people like with what you guys do. So it's like, man, that progression of passion to where, you know, people were looking for a way to either multiply money from their active income for tax reasons or multiplying it into passive rivers of revenue, we call it. Um, You know, we teach people and show people how to do that through a company called Simplified Investing. It's just simplifiedinvesting.com. Um, and then we have a personal growth and development company called Loveco, which is L O B E C O, Loveco.live. And um, and really that's what God's called us to do. The, you know, it's it, we're in a mastermind, a business mastermind, and the head guy uh, he was asking us, he was like, because one of the things we always tell people is talking financially, is cash flow is not the answer. You know, cash flow is a big buzzword. Cash flow, cash flow. People wear hats and shirts. We say cash flow is not the answer. <laughs> cash overflow is the answer. You can be making a thousand dollars a month while you sleep. That's cash flow. That's not, you're not going to be living your dreams. That's a little helpful. Cash overflow is the answer. So we show people how to step into cash overflow, not someday off in the future, but right now by leveraging assets, by owning income producing properties with no money of their own, no credit um, on a part time basis. And so that's a passion of ours, just unlocking and unleashing people to live freely and fully and get to step into their dreams right now, to step into their life beyond their dreams, a life they didn't even know. They realized they were dreaming small. Like, wow, I didn't even know this is even something I could even experience or live in. So we do that through that vehicle of just education through simplified investing. Um, and the last thing I'll say about that is our me- our message at the core is you are the real estate. You know, this whole session here has all been about different topics, but it's just been the same topic of you. Yeah. Why is Stephen and Chelsea do this, mm-hmm. guys? Why are we here? To invest into you, whoever you are, wherever you're at listening to this right now, it's about you. God, I mean, why is God, why do they do all this? It's about you, us investing in you, because we know if you grab a hold of some of these principles and processes and apply them in your life, man, the joy that it gives us just to know that you take action on the information and transform not only your life, but the infinite ripple effect into your family and the rest of the world, because they need you to be living that free, abundant life that God puts you here to live in your unique ways. And so that's what lights us up and fires us up and why we so align with incredible people like Stephen and Chelsea, because it you are the real estate. You are the real estate. So if you're not investing in yourself, that's the answer. Your marriage, your children, financial, that's all byproduct of you. So we got to get honest with ourselves and, and start there and stay there. And as David mentioned, uh, Life with Katie Marie is a brand I'm super passionate about. And minimalism is one of the core topics that I love to talk on. And uh, so I have a YouTube channel, if you just look up Life with Katie Marie, but I have a bunch of videos on there about capsule wardrobes, what they are, kind of 
um, I take you through my decluttering process. And so that's something that can really get you launched. And I'm going to be creating more videos um, coming in the near future. And I'm going to be actually launching it as a community, as a support system for you too. So make sure that you are um, following me. I'd love to connect with you on Instagram, Life with Katie Murray. And then you can check out the YouTube channel as well. And you can inspire me to make more because... It's a big part of my heart and I want to bless you. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. This has been incredible. Thank you guys so much for being on the Rainmaker Family Show. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Rainmaker Family Show. Hey, if you are not a part of our Rainmaker Mastermind, we have a new opportunity for you to book a one-on-one strategy call with one of our Rainmaker coaches. If you want to get a call with them, see if it's a good fit for you to work with us to build a business that allows you to have time freedom and financial freedom, you can get that call at makeitrainmama.com slash podcast. That's makeitrainmama, M-O-M-M-A dot com slash podcast.